Okay, we're looking at a Beam K Precision model E200D. It's an RF signal generator. Uh, came out about 1970, was popular, popular during the 70s uh, uh, because of its reasonable price and feature uh, capability. In uh, seven bands, it covers frequencies from 100 kilohertz to 216 megahertz. Um, goes from 100 kilohertz to 54 megahertz on fundamentals and uh, then goes from 32 megahertz to 216 megahertz on the top two of the seven bands in harmonics. Uh, it produces continuous wave, uh, has internal and external modulation, uh, and will provide a 400 hertz tone out. It has a uh, meter on it that can read either percent modulation or can read the um, uh, the carrier output uh, in dB. Um, essentially you have a calibrated voltmeter for the output. Um, it has a built-in crystal calibrator uh, with 1 megahertz and 100 kilohertz uh, uh, marker blips that show up across the dial and those markers are audible. Uh, there's a little built-in speaker in here that uh, uh, takes the uh, the beat frequency between the RF frequency of the output and the frequency of the crystal calibrator and allows you then to literally uh, tune uh, to the uh, crystal points, the marker points. So that can make you, uh, that can increase your accuracy on the dial, although the dial is quite accurate on its own. I believe it uh, it's rated at something like one and a half percent of accuracy, something like that on the uh, spec sheet. It has a uh, a fine attenuator that's uh, constantly variable. It has um, uh, one let's see six uh, different attenuators, a six dB, a ten dB, and then four twenty dB attenuators that you can click in and out, and. Um, uh, has a, uh, a variable modulation uh, uh, control. Vernier dial. Nice looks. Vinyl top. Uh, metal sides and bottom. Uh, has an external modulator out uh, input here. And um, I've modified the unit to go from the old uh, uh, microphone button style. Uh, uh, connector, which would be rather hard to find uh, any cables, and you certainly would have to adapt to the to the modern cables that you'd use with your instrumentation today. So, just made sense to go ahead and and modify the unit to provide a BNC connector. Turned out quite nice, attractive looking. Looks like it was made that way, um, and functionally, it's it's quite nice. So what we're going to do, I've got it hooked up here to my uh, to my scope. Now I'm going to move this light so we'll dim things a little bit. Let's uh, kill the overhead too. There we go. Okay, we're going to um, go ahead and uh, start dialing in uh, frequencies on band A. Uh, band A covers 100 kilohertz to 370 kilohertz, and um, we're going to watch the screen on the scope behind it, just to make sure we don't drop out, do anything strange back there. You will see the amplitude change, because this unit was, is the case with nearly all of the uh, inexpensive RF generators. There's no attempt, really, to control the amplitude as you're changing the frequency. You do that manually with the attenuator control and whatever you're using on the receiving side. All right, we've just gone through uh, 10 kilo, 100 kilohertz to 370 kilohertz. And uh, to save time, I'm going to start on the high end of band B. And uh, band B goes from 370 kilohertz to 1.4 megahertz, or 1400 kilohertz, however you wish to go by. Let's go ahead and, uh, as you can see on the screen in the back, we're going to start decreasing frequency now. 
heading down to the 370 kilohertz mark. And there we go. Band C covers um, 1.4 megahertz to 5.1 megahertz. We're going to take it up and uh, let's kick our, there we go. I'm going to also kick up our uh, range on the scope. There we go. And we're going to take the uh, frequency up now. Just reached the end of uh, of C. Kick that up a little bit. Let's go to band D. All right, we're on band D. Band D covers um, uh, 5.1 megahertz to 16 megahertz, and. Uh, Turn it up a little bit back there. We're going downwards in frequency in this case. All right. And band E covers 16 megahertz to 54 megahertz. Uh, increase our scale. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Going up in frequency. We go to um, band H2. All right, I tried to figure out a way to, uh, to demonstrate that the harmonics on, uh, on the last two ranges, H2 and 4, are actually there. Because the only thing that you can really physically see on the scope is the, uh, is the fundamental. So what I did is, I've hooked this up to a television set, and uh, we're going to see if we can see the uh, modulation on the set. So right now we're tuned into channel 2, and I think you're going to see that it's quite obvious we do get uh, harmonics on the, uh, on the screen here as I adjust the tuning, Ser yep, searching for the channel. Put my 400 hertz tone into the TV set now. Okay. How about we go to channel 4. And we adjust for 4. There we go. So, channel 7, again looking for the channel, right about there, 9, there we go, <laughs> so it's obviously uh, that we are getting the harmonics and uh, and they're visible. So the the unit is functional. It produces signals on all of its bands. It's nice looking. Has a uh, a new uh, uh, 
BNC adapter tip to it. Um, the attenuator switches work fine. Watch the attenuation on the TV. And um, the meter works as we adjust the level of the uh, of the RF signal. All right. So what I'm going to try and do now is to uh, demonstrate that. Um, the unit is as accurate on its vernier as I was talking about. So I have hooked up a, uh, a fluke counter here. And I'm going to turn this light off. Maybe we can get a little better look at the counter. Uh, I believe we can there. And as I dial in, I'm going to turn on our crystal calibrator so you can hear the, um, the beep modulation of the uh, crystal against the frequency and we can see how it's used in the tuning. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, right now I am near a one megahertz crystal mark and I'm going to tune until that sound goes down to a zero. And as I do, you're going to see our frequency approach a full marker point. There we go. We are at 100 kilohertz. And our dial is reading right now just a shade under 10. So we are quite close to the 100 kilohertz on there, but with the calibrator, uh, we got it nailed, and uh, as the frequency regenerator shows us. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, tune to a mid-range. Mid uh, that would be, uh, let's go to 370, so... That's about uh, 270 divided by 2 would be about 135. So let's go to about 235. All right, I'm going to go, um, I'm looking at the dial right now, adjusting it. There's 2, there's 230. 235 would be right about here on the dial. And we hear it coming up. So with the zero beat, we got down to 235.28 on the, and the dial was, uh, is right now close enough to that that I couldn't tell you the difference hardly. According to my frequency counter, 235 is right there. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and hit full band, that'd be 370. 370 on the dial is right there. We're reading 371.9 on the meter. And if I go for the zero beat, well, there's 370. And there's the zero beat, 370.3. Let's go to BAM B. Obviously a fundamental. There's the zero beat. We got 999.94. Uh, so we are right at um, it's 999.94 kilohertz. So we're right out of megahertz. According to the... There is a megahertz right there. Alright, let's go to uh, one and a half. Well, here's one. Here's 1.4 right here on the dial. I'm reading uh, 1.406 on the meter. And if I zero beat it, Uh, 
I get a 139.99, so right at it. So that's how this uh, unit works as far as the zero beating and the, uh, the vernier. Both the vernier dial, uh, the vernier dial gets you quite close. The zero beating gets you right in there, and then if you happen to have a, uh, a frequency counter, you're going to be dead on. So wanted to demonstrate that for you. Uh, we also have crystal calibration marks at, uh, not crystal, but we have 100 kilohertz um, oscillator marks as well. And, uh, there was one right there. So every 100 kilohertz you'll get it. So there we have it. Along with it will come a, uh, a manual. I have uh, the user's guide as well as the uh, service manual. This, uh, the instruction manual explains all of the capabilities of the unit. Then it talks you through or shows you how to um, how to calibrate a radio, uh, adjust the IF stages, maybe work on a short wave, FM systems, aligning television receivers, and then here's the service manual with all of the uh, documentation on uh, parts and uh, calibrations and so on. So I uh, decided to let you know that I'll also throw in a uh, set of test leads coaxial with the gator clipped ends. They're kind of the uh, the most common for this sort of a thing. So that would be provided along with the uh, the manuals and the unit. Thanks for listening. I, I wish you well on your bidding. Thanks.